If you've ever found yourself wondering what the pros know about using marker pens that you don't, then you'll find these five tips make a big difference to your marker sketching. Stick around for tip number five, it's the only one that doesn't directly involve marker pens, yet it's probably the most important of them all. Tip one, before you put marker pen to paper, select your pens. I always work on the basis that a sketch looks most dynamic when it's made up of three tones, light, medium and dark. This mix of light, medium and dark gives you the tools to describe shape and form. Put the three tones in the right place and your sketch will become three dimensional. So how do you choose which tones should fill which surfaces? Well, that's here in tip two. Imagine you're in a room with no lights. You wouldn't see anything. Now imagine you're in a room with a hundred lights. Everything would be bright and there'd be no shadows. To help with your sketching, imagine your shape is in a room with one light. Where you position your imaginary light source will determine how much light reaches each surface. Some of them will be fully exposed to light, some will be partially exposed, and some will be hidden. When you're ready to put marker pen to paper, decide on the position of your imaginary light source. In this example, I've placed it in the top right corner of the page. It's somewhere above the shape and a little behind it. So the top surfaces of the shape are exposed, so they'll be the light tone. The ones that are partially exposed will be the mid-tone, and the surfaces that are hidden from the light source will be the darker tone. Tip 3. Before you start filling in a surface with colour, outline your shape with marker pen first. It'll give you a border to work within, provide you a margin for error by making it less likely that you'll sketch beyond the edge, and it'll allow you to work quickly. In tip 4 I'll explain why it's important to work quickly. So, generally speaking, we want to work quickly with markers because we want to keep the ink wet while we work. When the pen goes back over an area that's been allowed to dry, the additional ink results in a darker tone. Now, we might use this to our advantage, particularly if we want to add mid-tones to our sketch. In other words, a tone between light and mid, or a tone between mid and dark. We might even go over an area to make our dark tone even darker. But to keep our process quick and effective, we should try and keep the edge of the ink wet as we fill an area. Tip 5. Now, tip 5 is perhaps the most valuable of them all, and it's something that's not mentioned much by designers. Just as important as the marker pens is the paper we choose. To most of us, paper's just paper, but that's not the full story. Imagine using marker pens on blotting paper. Your ink would be sucked out of the pen in no time and you could forget about making any sharp edges as your ink would bleed across the paper. The opposite would happen on tracing paper. The surface of tracing paper is much less absorbent and the ink would collect on top and take forever to dry. Whilst the sketchbook I'm using here is good for ideating on the go, it's not great for marker pens. The colours and tones look a bit dull and washed out. For the best results, use a specific marker pen paper. You'll find links to my favourite and to the pens I've used in this video in the description below. Now if you've found these five tips helpful, you'll want to watch this video next.